Welcome to Passion Air Magazine, the podcast where we talk about business, tech, food and travel, fashion, health and fitness, the arts and culture, where we want you to live your passion. Passion Air Magazine, the podcast. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. I will be doing a five part series. It is a reflection of an interview that I did with Authority Magazine. I was interviewed by Cynthia Corsetti, and the series is called Five Ways Empathy Will Affect Your Leadership. Now, of course, we will put a link in the description so that you can go and read the full article. However, I thought that I would bring the main question of the interview to you here. And that question is, based on your experience and research, can you please share five ways empathy will affect your re- leadership? Now, I thought that this was a great question that she asked, but to be honest, all of the questions that she asked were pretty spot on. They really allowed you to get to know each person that she was interviewing. And she had some follow-up questions that I thought were really great as well. So please be sure to check out that article. But the one of the answers that I gave was building trust and rapport. So what I would like to do is drill down just a little bit on that answer, even further than what I did in the interview. So building trust and rapport, it is something that is really important if you are trying to be an empathetic uh, leader, or if you're trying to have an empathetic influence over the people that you are leading. And here are some reasons why. And they're in no particular order. Because it enhances understanding and connection. Being an empathetic leader means that you are actively listening and you seek to understand the perspectives and the emotions of your team members. By doing this, you are hoping to create a connection based on mutual understanding, on mutual understanding, not just because you are the leader, but because you wish to understand not only a fellow human being, but someone on your team. This understanding fosters a sense of belonging and it strengthens the bond between the leader and the team. Let's face it. When people join an organization or association, they want to feel as though they belong with this group of people. When you are on a team at work or in your workplace, you want to feel as though what you say is heard, that you are being felt or understood. So all of this is so important when it comes to building trust and rapport. Team members feel heard and valued when they contribute and it is met with a positive reflection. It builds a trusting work environment. So don't take anyone on your team for granted. Don't assume that they are just happy to be there and don't ignore what they have to say. Make a genuine connection. Next, it supports emotional well-being. Leaders who exhibit empathy are attuned to the emotional well-being of their team members. Let me say that again. Leaders who exhibit empathy are attuned to the emotional well-being of their team. They recognize and they acknowledge both the professional and and the personal challenges that someone may be dealing with. By offering this support and understanding during their difficult times, leaders create a supportive atmosphere that goes beyond the workplace. This investment in the emotional well-being of their team builds a foundation of trust and rapport. 
So you may be saying, but I don't understand why do I need to go beyond the workplace? When you recognize and acknowledge that your team member not only has a professional life, what they're doing between nine to five, let's say, but you also understand that they have a personal life, what they do after 5 p.m., but that that is just as or equally as important to that person as their professional life is. When you understand that perhaps they're dealing with babysitting issues, so you promptly allow that person to leave at 5 p.m. How many of you are parents and you have a child that attends some type of after school activity? We all know that the child must be picked up by, I believe it's 6 p.m. With that being said, if you get off at five and you perhaps have to go quite a distance to pick up your child, if you are in a major city, you know that 30 minutes away is really an hour in traffic. So you sometimes get there just in time. Having a team leader, having that person who is in control of your work environment, being empathetic toward your needs and understanding that you need to leave at 4.59 and 50 seconds so that you could be out of the door at 5 p.m. makes all the difference in the world. Perhaps you have a little child and that child is dealing with being ill. If they understand and know that, then yes, maybe they will be more flexible with your schedule, allow you to work from home remotely. There are so many things that can come out of having this type of support as a team leader, knowing that you value your teammate, your employee, your employee will value you as well. It is a mutual relationship. And that's what they mean by creating a supportive atmosphere that goes beyond the workplace. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to stop by on Saturday for tea sandwiches and scones, but it does mean that you understand that perhaps they are not the ones that you put on the let's work late team because you know that they are caring for their elderly parent. Just knowing what's going on helps build what? Trust and rapport. Another example of this is increased employee engagement. Empathetic leaders are better equipped to understand the unique strengths and motivations of each team member. By recognizing and leveraging individual strengths, leaders can tailor tasks and responsibilities to align with each team member's abilities and interests. This personalized approach to leadership increases employee engagement as team members feel that their contributions are valued and aligned with their skills, further strengthening the trust between the leader and the team. No one wants to be placed in a task where they feel as though they are ill-tagged. But at the same time, if you have properly placed me, then I want to be able to step up and to show my leadership within that group. So many times as an employer, when you place that employee in the right place, in the right committee, on the right team, you are showing them how much you trust and respect what they bring to the table. And in turn, they will shine as brightly as they can and will they will be able to demonstrate why they were placed in a leadership role. Another way that we can build trust and rapport and really 
help our team understand why it is important to do so is due to effective communication and feedback. Trust is the bedrock of open and effective communication. Leaders who have established trust and rapport with their team members find it easier to communicate expectations, provide constructive feedback, and engage in transparent conversations. This opens communication style, fosters a culture of continuous improvement where team members feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and receiving guidance. Now, we all know that you never want to be chastised or corrected as though you were a child. So that constructive criticism can be key. The person is taken into account the all that has gone on, but still may have ways in which you can make better, do better, perceive more. You know what I mean. In that, you are able to grow as the employee, as the team member. Now, this also means that as the leader, as the employer, you too have to be aware of what is going on. You too have to be able to communicate your expectation. You cannot fault someone for not doing what you've asked if you yourself don't know how to ask. If you can't describe what it is that you want, if you are not able to convey your dream or your vision of what you ultimately want to the other, then the other person cannot fully manifest what it is that you wish to bring to life. So being able to communicate your expectation and provide that feedback is key. Let's face it, no one also wants to do more work than they are asked to do. Most folks, if you really had an open communication policy, would say, you know, I want to do my job, not my job plus someone else's job. I want to do my job and do my job well. I don't want to have to cover for someone else. I want the room, the permission to do it to the best of my ability, be seen for doing what I do and rewarded accordingly. So when we have effective communication and feedback, then this really, again, builds the trust and rapport. Another way is increased team cohesion and collaboration. Building trust and rapport within a team creates a cohesion, a collaborative environment and spirit. It creates a collaborative working environment. When team members trust that their leaders and others, that they are more likely to share their ideas, they're more likely to collaborate on projects. When they trust their leader and each other, they are more supportive of one another and their leader. This sense of unity fosters a positive team culture. It also enhances overall productivity and innovation. When you feel that you are a team, it really changes how you do your job. If you are a lone wolf on a team, sometimes that can be quite difficult. If you are a team player placed in an independent task or position, that could be quite difficult. But when you know what each member does and how they do it, when you know their skill set, When you understand how they operate, then you can build an amazing team and you will get a positive end result because you've placed people properly. When you see that the cohesion has taken place, the collaboration soars because you have that person with that person. 
You have this team working with that team. And that, my friend, ends up being a well-oiled machine. You find that in that, what you didn't even expect perhaps to happen might happen with a positive result because they have been given permission to do what they do and they do it quite well. Understanding that building trust and rapport is something that we should not take for granted and is something that we need, especially as empathetic leaders. Then as we work on each one of these points, I think that you will find that your team, that your workplace, that the culture of your environment will change for the positive. So as we start to look at the things that we need to change business-wise, as we are concluding this fourth and final quarter of the year, and we start to look at how we can implement a fresh, a new perspective, or those things that we need to keep with one or two tweaks, this may be the very thing that you need to do to help your team, to help your work culture be all that you thought it could be. Now, again, this is a five-part series because it is a five-part question that I was answered. And again, if you would like to read more about that full article, you can um, look in the description here. We will have the link Um, in the description. And the title of the article is Five Ways Empathy Will Affect Your Leadership. The interview is with Cynthia Corsetti and the magazine is Authority Magazine. You can find it on the Medium platform. So thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. And I cannot wait to continue to share um, each one of the five points that I shared in the article. Please be sure to read the article. We are just briefly going over them here today, but I wanted to bring it to Passioneer Magazine, the podcast, so that you too could make the changes that perhaps you need to change or continue doing exactly what you're doing. Let me know some ways that you are building rapport and trust within your team in your workplace. How is your work environment, your work culture allowing you to display that you are an amazing team player? Alrighty, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today. And I hope that you will have an awesome and amazing week. Thank you for listening. To Passionaire Magazine, the podcast.